This podcast is not a replacement to any formal lectures or clinical placement. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the 11th episode of our case series podcast. I am Lakshmi and I am Kamna. Hope you all are doing well and staying safe. Today we have a 55 years old male with severe chest pain for 2 hours. Stay tuned with us to know about what could be the cause and to know more about the case a 55 years old male businessman from bagdapur presented to the medical emergency with the chief complaints of severe retrosternal chest pain and shortness of breath for 2 hours which was sudden in onset crushing in nature radiating to the left arm back and neck associated with profuse sweating and nausea aggravated on exertion and was not relieved with rest and pantoprazole he is a known case of hypertension for 12 years and type 2 diabetes mellitus for 10 years under medication there is no history of cough wheezing and hemoptysis So was there any similar presentation in the past the patient had a history of a few episodes of central chest pain discomfort and breathlessness in the past lasting for a few seconds and was relieved and rest he gives no history of tuberculosis asthma or any other chronic surgical illness in the past okay can you tell me something about his personal history the patient consumes some mixed diet is a smoker takes 5 sticks per day for 20 years which is a 5 pack years he also consumes alcohol occasionally in the form of beer his appetite bowel and bladder habit are regular and his sleep pattern is normal he gives history of hypertension in his father but not in other family members there is no significant history of any chronic surgical illness running in the family Pacin was taking antihypertensive and antidiabetic medication. His drug compliance was poor. Also, there is no significant history of allergy to any drug, dust or food. The patient could not specify any immunization history. So, after this brief history being taken, we can make some history based differential diagnosis like acute myocardial infarction, unstable angina, pleurisy, pericarditis, pneumothorax or pulmonary embolism. On quickly accessing the patient's general appearance, he looks pale and anxious, well built, oriented to time, place and person. His vitals measurements showed blood pressure of 160 by 90 mmHg in lying position. a regular rhythm pulse of 90 beats per minute temperature being 100 degree fahrenheit and respiratory rate of 26 per minute on physical examination no clubbing pallor splinter hemorrhages coelonychia or leukonychia was seen his carotid pulse was thin jvp not raised no signs of jaundice or anemia were seen in his eyes lymph nodes were not palpable pedal and sacral edema absent no other significant findings were found On systemic examination, no chest deformities, stenotomy, or any other surgical scars were inspected. The apex bit was palpated lateral to mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. On auscultation of mitral, tricuspid, aortic, and pulmonary area showed normal S1, S2. No added sounds and murmurs were heard. For abdominal examination was soft, not tender, liver and spleen not palpable. No tracheal shift or any other remarkable findings were found on respiratory examination. No significant CNS changes were found. Based on the examination findings, we can now narrow our diagnosis as myocardial infarction or unstable angina. To reach a specific diagnosis, we have to perform some routine investigations. The first and foremost investigation done in an emergency setting for a patient presenting with chest pain is electrocardiogram. ECG showed ST elevation in leads second, third, and EVF, and was in sinus rhythm. Lab investigation for cardiac biomarkers showed raised troponin T and I, and increased CKMB to level of 236 unit per liter. Reference range being 50 to 160 unit per liter. His chest X-ray was normal with no evidence of pulmonary edema. Other routine blood investigations were normal. Echocardiographic findings showed hypokinetic inferior segment. moderate mitral regurgitation and left ventricular ejection fraction reduced to 45 percent combining all the history examinations and investigations 
a diagnosis of acute inferior wall myocardial infarction with moderate mitral regurgitation and leaf ventricular ejection fraction of 45% in sinus rhythm was concluded. So, before knowing management, let's talk shortly about what myocardial infarction is, its pathogenesis, and how it presents. Myocardial infarction, commonly known as a heart attack, is a death of cardiac muscles due to prolonged severe ischemia. It is an acute coronary syndrome, almost always occurring in patients with atherosclerosis. According to WHO, about 15.9 million myocardial infarctions were recorded worldwide in 2015. Yearly, about 12.2 percentage death occurs from ischemic heart diseases. Prolonged severe chest pain is the cardinal symptom, occasionally radiating to the throat, back or arms. The patient may present with breathlessness, nausea, vomiting, feeling faint, a cold sweat or feeling tired. The most common cause of myocardial infarction are coronary artery diseases. It usually occurs due to the rupture of an atherosclerotic plaque on an artery supplying heart muscle. The plate becomes unstable, ruptures, and additionally promotes platelet aggregation, forming a blood clot that blocks the artery supplying heart. A myocardial infarction may result from a heart with limited blood supply, subjected to increased oxygen demands like a fast heart rate, fever, hyperthyroidism, anemia, or low blood pressure. An impaired blood flow to the heart for longer period triggers a process of ischemic cascade, leading to myocardial necrosis. The risk factors commonly include a high blood pressure, smoking, diabetes, lack of exercise, obesity or high blood cholesterol. Diagnostic methods include electrocardiogram, blood test, cardiac biomarkers, echo or coronary angiography. After the immediate clinical assessment done, we now have our management goals set as to decrease the signs and symptoms, to preserve as much heart muscle as possible and to avoid further complications. Treatment in general aims to unblock blood vessels, reduce blood clot enlargement, reduce ischemia, and modify risk factors with aims of preventing future MI. The management protocol emphasizes firstly on airway, breathing, and circulation. Hence, he was supplemented with oxygen and kept on cardiac rhythm monitoring. The peripheral IV line was opened for fluid resuscitation and electrolyte balance. To comfort the patient from pain, morphine 5 mg IV bolus was given and metoclopramide 10 mg IV as an antimetic. The patient was provided with aspirin 300 mg and ticagrelor 180 mg orally to avoid thrombotic actions in the circulation. Also, 10 mg metoprolol was infused intravenously. Then, for further care and better surveillance, he was transferred to the coronary care unit. Since the ECG shows ST segment elevation, an echo shows hypokinetic inferior segment, and most importantly, the patient has presented to us within two hours of symptoms onset. Reperfusion therapy with primary percutaneous coronary intervention was done. PCI helps to restore coronary artery patency in over 95% of patients considered within 24 hours. PCI involves small probes inserted through peripheral blood vessels into the blood vessels of heart and clear blockages using small balloons which are dragged through the blocked segment dragging away the clot or the insertion of stents. A glycoprotein 2nd B third A receptor antagonist was given intravenously to avoid platelet aggregation and thrombus formation as an add-on to PCI. Then he was kept on maintenance therapy with aspirin, ticagrelor, beta blocker and ACE inhibitor along with adequate nursing care until discharge. Late management of myocardial infarction includes risk stratification and further investigations in order to prevent further complications of MI like arrhythmia, recurrent angina, acute heart failure, pericarditis, Gristle syndrome, papillary muscle rupture, embolism, etc. A modification in lifestyle is very crucial to limit disease progression. He was advised to consume a low-fat diet and control his weight. Immediate suggestion of smoking and alcohol with regular light exercise. Secondary prevention drug therapy with antiplatelet, beta blocker, statins, and continuation of his previous antihypertensive and antidiabetic medications were prescribed. He was then discharged after two days and was advised for regular follow up or visit when necessary. 
Lastly, to summarize our case, we had a 55-year-old male complaining of severe retrosternal chest pain and shortness of breath for two hours, visited to emergency department where he was assured with necessary investigations, cardiac monitoring, oxygen supplementation, and basic management of other signs and symptoms with which he presented, after which he was admitted to CCU where immediate reperfusion with primary PCI was performed. He was then kept in hospital maintenance for two days under medication and all necessary information about disease, its complications, relevant health education and a regular follow-up was advised before discharge. Hope you all had a happy learning. We will be back soon with the new case. Till then, stay tuned, stay safe.